Well, we st we um, start by welcoming everybody. And we're here in the Vanderbilt University Library and the author's room to talk to Gretchen Selke today. And Gretchen, if you can introduce yourself, um, we'll talk a little bit more. Um, I'll read the preamble and we'll talk a little bit about books that you love. Sure, I'm happy to do this. My name is Gretchen Selke. I'm the incoming director of Latino and Latina Studies at Vanderbilt. And um, I'm happy to talk about how much I love Vanderbilt's libraries and how much I love books. Great, thank you. Um, this sort of project started a while ago um, from reading uh, the work of a woman named Laura Miller. And she writes that the first book we fall in love with shapes us every bit as much as the first person we fall in love with. And this kind of emotional attachment often affects choices that we make as, as adults. So in thinking, keeping that in mind, I hope you can reflect with us a little bit about books that you've loved. Um, for example, what was the first book you fell in love with? So this was the hardest question for me of the questions. Um, and I'm going to be honest, it is not an academic answer. I distinctly remember figuring out in kindergarten that I could read more than the books that we got. And when I was in kindergarten back in the dark ages, you went home with these weekly readers. And um, I'm sure they had phonics lessons in them. I don't remember any of those stories, but I do remember thinking like, this is it. Because I was very excited about five days of school and you know, I'd been amped up for kindergarten and I remember being super disappointed after the first week that I wasn't reading like real stuff. And so I remember taking a book off the bookshelf at home and seeing what I could do. And it was Beverly Cleary. And I know that it was Ramona Quimby age eight because I was like, wow, she's eight and I am five. So like we're basically the same age, <laughs> like in my head. I remember thinking like, oh, Ramona has a long name like Gretchen and she had kind of a disillusionment with school at some points and she loved some teachers and didn't love some teachers and that was sort of me. And I remember sitting very, I remember, we had shared a room with my sister and I remember it being in my bed. And the rule was you had to turn the lights off, but my mother was probably just exhausted. So just stay in your bed. So we got a flashlight. I remember reading all of Ramona in one night. And um, that began the love affair, which plagues me to this day that I have a really hard time, if it's a really good book, putting it down. And I have been known to keep reading <laughs> until sunrise many times. <laughs> it sounds like lots of things made that book special to you. You identified with Ramona, you identified with reading and with school. Um, have you reread it? And if you have, what did what did you think? So I um, I have a daughter who is five and starting kindergarten, um, who also reads, not under the covers with the flashlight yet. But I think she would like to if she thought that was a possibility were a possibility. So I have not shown her that that is an amazing tent. Um, I read all the Ramonas because I found them at a consignment sale. And they were a dollar for the whole set, like nice ones that were hard bound. And I was like, well, this is the bargain of a century and obviously I need this. And then of course I read them all like a crack addict, all in like, all in a row. Because, I mean, I remember Ramona being a long book, right? And of course it's not a long book. So I read the whole series in like one go. And um, it was amazing because I think, I still think I'm Ramona, right? I don't identify with the adults. And I think that's kind of why it's magic. Thank you. What book shaped your imagination or captured, your, captured you before college as a reader? So I remember reading um, this book called, um, no, I might not get it quite right. It was called like My Dominia. And it was from the Wisconsin Public Library in Watoma, Wisconsin, which is about the size of a trailer. Um, and there weren't that many books that were at all interesting to me as like a 16 year old. And I was staying with my grandparents at their house by a lake in Wisconsin. And it was one of those summers where it was like bugs and rain. Um, and I remember reading this book that I never heard of. And I remember thinking, wow, this is a lot harder than the stuff I read at school. And um, 
you know, it was just more challenging. There were more characters. Things weren't in chronological order. And um, I'm sure it's not a great work of literature. But for me, it was the first time I really had to read something twice to get it. And um, that to me was a revelation because I realized like, oh, the story, you have to really pay attention. It doesn't make sense. And all these interesting things are happening out of order. Um, so I, I just remember that um, because it was a different kind of reading, kind of paying attention. Is there a book that set you on your professional path? Yes. I read as a first year in college, um, in a, in a Spanish course, um, Celestina, the tre, it's the Traje Comedia de Calisto y Medivea, but everyone calls it the Celestina, by Fernando de Rojas. It's a play. It was published in 1499. Um, and in this play, which is known sort of by its most important character and not by its title, La Celestina is a um, woman who is uh, a woman of many talents. She owns what probably is a brothel. She resows hymens. She um, has lots of herbs and potions. And um, I remember thinking, wow, like this kind of character is so cool. Like why are there more of these kind of characters in literature? And of course there are, but I hadn't really seen them. I grew, you know, my, my, I had a very traditional school background. We read all the boring stuff and none, not, this would not have been approved by the public schools I went to, <laughs> and, um, and I read it in Spanish, and I, it was difficult, but it was fascinating, and I wrote my honors thesis about that book later, and that was kind of the beginning for me, which is terrible to say because I've been allowed to go study, it's a very peninsular book, but that's the one that started it. Is there a book that influences your work now? Oh, for sure. Um, I read Geographies of Home by a woman named Loida Maritza Perez. Um, it was published in 1999. I think I read it in 2006, maybe. And it was sort of the counter narrative to the famous Juno Dios books, which are, you know, Juno Dios is problematic, but was problematic even before his um, problematic personal life and a criminal personal life, um, because his books definitely had a misogynistic tone and there were problematic ways of thinking about women. And Luis de Maritza Perez, who's also Dominican American, um, wrote sort of the female Oscar Wilde. Um, and reading that book, which has one of the most shocking and violent and also moving conclusions of anything I've ever read, made me go, wow, this is what I want to do. Why is this woman, wh why this story, why this way, why this genre, all the things that now professionally I think about and read about and write about kind of happened in that book. And it was by thinking about the antecedents to that book that I really got going where I am now. Is there a book that you like to share with friends and family or coworkers? So people often say, what should I read? And I would say, anything that you think looks good. Um, I fully admit that I am not a book snob in any way. Um, and I always say, like, what do, you, like, what do you like? You know, what's a favorite book of yours? And sometimes that kind of helps me. But if they're like, oh, I just want to read something that's good, um, I give them The Feast of the Goat. And if they read Spanish, La Fiesta del Chivo, which is um, 2000, Mario Vargas Llosa. It's about um, the Trujillo dictatorship in um, the Dominican Republic. And many people have read Eduige Dabdicat and know about the 1937 massacre but they don't really know about everything that is the Dominican Republic. Um, and that book, first of all, it's, a, it's beautifully written. Um, super interesting. It's not necessarily something people would read. It's not on any of the, it's not on any of the lists of 100 greats. Maybe it will be someday. 
Um, but that's kind of my one that I'm like, oh, if you if you like things like this, you might like this book. Because lots of us have read 100 Years of Solitude, or we're forced to, and have a definite reaction about like, oh, that was great, or oh my god, I couldn't keep it straight. So that book to me has some of the magic, but more of the history. And I think me many people respond to it in some way. There's a little of everything for everyone in that book. Is there a book that, uh, that was a gift book that you remember? I do. I remember very specifically that my um, babysitter, <laughs> whose name was Kari Larson, um, gave me a book when I started first grade. And it was the night before school, and I think I might still even have her little note. She was plus 60 or 17, which to me was like amazing, because she was not my mom's age, but like an adult. She could drive. Um, and she also could paint her nails, which was fascinating. Um, and she gave me Stuart Little. And she wrote in it, in like those letters where you write the bubbles, like the dots, like to my favorite girl. Oh, that makes me cry. Like she was just so, like she was like, like school will be an adventure. And I just remember thinking like, First of all, it was like beautiful. It was illustrated. It was probably like very expensive. I mean, I don't know. It, I still have it. And it was this beautiful illustrated Stuart Little book and she wrote this beautiful thing and she did give one to my sister. She gave my sister some stupid toy. But like that book to me was like, and it was in a red ribbon. And I was just like, oh, Carl Larson, the most glamorous person that I know, gave me this like treasure. And she wrote like, I hope I get to read it with you, but if you want to read ahead, I totally get it. And I was just like, oh, she gets that I, like, you know, because that's kind of a weird, like, I mean, I was a weird kid, obviously. Right? I was seven, and my favorite present was this book. But I think part of it was that it was from this woman, girl, who was like, I idolized her. And part of it was that it was beautiful. And it was a great story, and it was just the right age, at just the right time. And I was that kind of kid who totally thought Stuart Little was like real, and that like I should definitely find find a mouse, because that would be my life. Like that would be amazing. And so I just remember, I I really remember that. I remember the moment. I remember the ribbon, which is weird. Like the things you remember, right? Memories are powerful. Um, I haven't thought about Carl Larson in years, but this that that's who that's the book I remember getting. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing your book loaves. Um, yeah. This is great. I'm so glad you're doing it. Thank you.